stigmatism in my soul. Check it out, man. We up here in the Bronx, man. Listen. The boogie down, man. Listen, listen, man. Listen. Listen, man. I do collabs, man. You understand? I do collabs. Y'all know who this is. You already know, man. He boys. work hard and he burn hard. That's a fact. This is Scott Burn Hard. Yes, sir. Yo, Scott, what's up, baby? Yo, listen, man. It's your boy Scott Burn Thank you for having me on the channel, Sean. I appreciate thank it. Thank you for thank you for reaching out. I think I think I was doing a I was doing a video or something, and you commented, yeah, or something, and then I said, "Yo, we gonna do a collab." Yeah, and then we reached out, and we done put this shit together, and here we go. Man. That was the push and wait event, and it's so funny. I was in a clip of the video, and then somebody tagged me like, "Yo, is that Scott Burhan?" I was like, "Yeah, that's me." Okay, you okay, know, that's, so, so so it was the push and wait joint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, now, now Scott, check it out. Now you know that shirt, man. You got to come up out that shirt. Man. Oh you know, man, let's you know that, man. What's you know, up? We don't do that, man. We don't do that. Listen, man. We don't do that. We in so the listen, Mecca. So listen, check it out. What's check up? It out. Um, what's up? Let's get some. Give me some quick money, real quick, let's man. Let's go, man. Some quick money, real quick, That's man. All I know, Yo, man. Yo, the South Bronx, man. What up? B X to B neck, dude. South Bronx, man. Scott Bernhard, check out his YouTube channel. Go subscribe to his channel. Okay, here you go. Here you go. You see him, y'all? Nigga tall, too. He about like 6'2", six 6'3". Six Getting that muscle-up money for y'all. Y'all see it? Jumping off the bar. You see it? See the piano keys right there on the side? Okay, 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 okay. He ain't even... Oh, shit. He turning it up, y'all. He done turned it up. One side of the bar. Stay. Uh oh. Uh oh. Fuck. Fuck going on. Oh man, look at this shit, y'all. Y'all see him? He's looking at the camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Light work. Hey, 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 Scott. Oh, let me give 20. you some burpees. All right, all right, all right. Okay, check him out, y'all. On the burpee tip. <laughs> Nigga lean and cut up, y'all. Y'all see it. Getting that money for y'all. Woo! Yo, Scott, check it out. <laughs> check it out. 15 body squats. Let's go. Let's go. They always talking about legs and shit. There you go. You're going in the bucket too, y'all. You're going in the bucket. You're going in the bucket. I just want to get the nigga blood flowing so I can get on these questions, man. So that truth can come out. The truth is I'll set you free, man. What's the count? Ivan, what's the count? Okay. I'll just keep going. All right. Two more. One. Ah. Two. Fifteen push-ups. Gas tank money. Clean push-ups, y'all. He going all the way down, all the way up. Y'all see him. Seven. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. One. Two. Three. Give me two more, Scott, in case we fucked up the count. One, two, money. All right, Scott, check it out, baby. Woo! Check it out, baby. What's up? Now, when we came up, when we, when we rolled up in the park, you said, yo, Sean, this is nostalgic for me to be up here in the Bronx. Yep. Add some color to that. Oh, uh, man. This is nostalgic for me because this is the park where I started at. 
I remember when I first came here. What year? Uh, 2011. All right. Around that time, I was starting college, and I first came to this park. I couldn't do anything. Had no pull-ups. Had no dips. I did push-ups, but my form was terrible. Skinny, skinny, skinny. You see me now, baby. Living proof. Hard work. Ethics. I put that pain in. Scott, where you was in college at? Uh, I went to Bronx Community, and then I went what to Baruch. What was your major? Marketing. Okay, then what? Then you did what? And then I did um, business administration. Where at? Um, Baruch. Okay, so you got your AA from Bronx Community. Yeah. Then with the Baruch, yeah. you got the B, you got the BS? Yeah, B -A? B -A, BS. Okay, yes. okay, that's what's up. Scott, how old are you? I'm 27. 27? Yeah. How tall are you, nigga? You tall? Yeah, no, I'm tall, motherfucker. Um, 63. 6'3", how much you weigh? Uh, 196. 6'3", 196. 6 196. Yeah. All right. Now, my man, you want me to ask some different questions now. Were you athletic? Did you play any sports as a kid? Um, not really. Well, I did, but I broke my right arm. This arm right here, I broke it three times as a kid. I broke it two times in Jamaica, and then one time here, and I know, man. Shit's crazy. All right, so let me tell you. First time I broke it, I was in Jamaica. I was playing. We call it football, but y'all call it soccer. It's whatever. I was playing football on the field, and all of a sudden I heard a dog. He said, "Woof, woof, woof." I started running for my life. So when I was running, I tripped over a rock. I landed on my right arm. And I broke it. Broke your shit. Yeah. All right, all right. Now let's gotta check it out. So you from Jamaica? Yeah. Did you make it? Yeah. Born and raised? Um, I was born here. Where? But my, right in the Bronx. Okay. No, I was born in um Harlem, and then Where I was Harlem? raised in Bronx. Um, by Harlem Hospital. Yeah, Harlem Hospital. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Then you was raised in the Bronx. Yeah. To what age? Um, I was raised in the Bronx until I was eight, and then I went to Jamaica. I went to I did school in Jamaica, and then came back. Where, where, where in Jamaica? What part of Jamaica? Um. My family's from Trelawney, but I went to school in Kingston and I went to school in St. Catherine. Okay. So my family's from countryside. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so Scott, now I called you last night to confirm everything for today. Yes, sir. You were saying something about you was teaching a class or some shit. Yeah. What the fuck is up with that shit? All right. So basically, um, I teach a class called Afro V Burnout, where we combine African dance. Um, we combine African music and Caribbean music, and we just make a whole Zumba class out of it. So it's me and my partner, Hurricane GH, shout out to Hurricane. And that's what we do, you know? So we like, uh, uh, you know, like little Taibo movements and all that, but we do it into African music and Caribbean music. Okay, okay. Yeah. Scott, um, now, so you Jamaican. Yeah. Now, you got that real Afrocentric look. You real dark, brother. Thank you, You got brother. your hair yeah. and shit. Um, I see the beads on your, yeah, man. on your arm, on your arm. Ancestral powers, man. Okay, now Scott, as a dark-skinned brother, man, growing up and even up to today, do it get kind of funky sometimes with your skin skin tone, man? Man, listen, when I was younger, and the way I, you wear your hair. Listen, when I was younger, I hated my skin complexion. I hated it. I had so much self-hate for myself because what Start was over, displayed Scott, to me. That, that shape. Oh, sorry. So when I was younger. You had so much self-hatred. So much self-hatred within myself because I was ridiculed for the color of my skin. Um, Even the most look, black people? Yeah. Like, I, I was looked down upon. Like, you know, it, it was funny too because people from my own community looked down on me. You know, it wasn't even the white people that was like saying, you know, all those negative things. It was people in my own community, man. And that shit really hurt me. And it really put a, a, a downplay on my confidence. So when I was younger, I just didn't understand the power of my skin. Until I got older, I started reading books. I started, you know, reading books, searching for the information, searching for that 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 one thing that that can allow me to accept my skin color. And then I found out Talk to him, Scott. that us as black people, we didn't derive from slavery. We were kings and queens before slavery. All right, we owned we owned massive wealth. They used to come for us. We, they used to come to us for trading. You know, the ancient kingdoms of Mali, Kush, Timbuktu, not Egypt, but Kemet, all right? So you gotta do your research and understand that us as black people, we derive from royalty, not slavery. 
All right, now, now, now Scott, um, let's talk about that piece, man, because a lot of people at a young age, and I was one too, everything that you just mentioned applies to me, okay? Now, how did you, how did you, and, and talk to me, how did you come up out of that? How did you go, do you still hate yourself today? I love myself. Okay, okay. Now, love it. talk about that. How, add some color to how you went from one extreme to the, to the next. You know, without the, all right, so without the present, without the past, there can't be no present. So when I looked into the past and I understood that my ancestors were kings and queens, merchants of rich, riches and wealth, I applied it to myself and I started to use a lot of positive affirmations. I'm a king. I'm more than, I'm greater than. I'm, a, I'm above and not beneath. I'm the head and not the tail. Those positive affirmations are the things that keep me going throughout my life. There's so many things against me as a black man. So many different things. But I gotta keep my head above water and understand that I'm royalty. Understand that my ancestors were not filled with me mediocrity. So I cannot, you know, I have to stand for what, what is greater than, you know what I'm saying? So I can't stand for mediocrity. I can't just stand for being um, stagnant. I, can just, I can't stand for being normal. So that's what keeps me going. And that's what makes me being proud as a black man, proud as an African man. Cause I know, yes, I'm Caribbean, I'm Jamaican, but I know that my ancestors came from the beautiful continent of Africa. All right? Yo, 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 Scott, you on that plant-based shit, right? Yes, I am. 100% plant-based? 100%, love it. I've been. Why um, you do that shit? All right, so let me tell you. Let me go back to the Slide story. Slide from the shade. That shade from in there. I know, man. Come this way, right here. Shade, hating on me, right, bro. Right, 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 right. Hating on that melanin. Yeah. Come on, man. So why, so, so why, <laughs> why, why you do that plant-based shit? All right, so for me, it was, it was healing. Sean, it was healing for me, man. Let me tell you. So back in 2015, I was shooting a documentary in, in Times Square called "The World Is a Gym," and I went up on the platform. I slipped and I hit my wrist. And when I hit my wrist. I didn't feel it until the day after because I had so much adrenaline in me. You know, that's why I was on the freestyle, you know. And then I woke up, I couldn't move my wrist at all, Sean. My wrist was dead stiff. And I know that feeling before because when I broke my right arm the third time, my nerves were dead. I couldn't, I couldn't write with my right arm. I had to learn to write with my left. So I felt like, okay, give it two weeks, it'll heal up. Two weeks passed, it didn't heal up. I couldn't do no pull-ups, I couldn't do no push-ups, I couldn't do nothing upper body wise. My wrist was shot. I went to the doctor, Sean, you know, which normal people do when something's wrong with them. I went to the doctor, the doctor told me I had inflammation. He didn't tell me how to cure inflammation, but he told me I had inflammation, gave me all this med uh, medication. And as an athlete, I'm like, all right, doc, I'm gonna do what you, what, you, what, you, what you told me to do. I took the medication for two months. Nothing was working for me, Sean. I became very depressed. I know that feeling of depression. I've been I've been depressed for so many so many times in my life. We're gonna get there. You know, and so talk about the risk. Get back so to the So let me wrist. get back to the risk. So he didn't tell me how to cure information. I got depressed. So something told me Google information. When I Googled information, it said meat was highly inflammatory. So it messed me up because growing up, you know, I'm Jamaican, I curry chicken, oxtail, you know, whatever. But when it said meat was highly inflammatory, it kind of messed me up. So then I started to do research. I didn't just jump into cold turkey. I did eight to nine months of researching on like the plant-based lifestyle, veganism. I studied Dr. Sebi. I studied Dr. Uh, Dr. Africa. I studied, um, I studied Queen of Fua. I read books, encyclopedias, YouTube videos, everything. So within eight to nine months, I was injured. Now, 2016, that's when I said, all right, let me try for one week, not eating meat. I knew, I had the information. I know how to, you know, supplement my protein, fats, and carbs, which is the macronutrients. I did it for one week, Sean. That was the best week of my life, man. My body rejuvenated itself, man. That was like, like my skin started to clear up. You know, I started to think better. I, I slept better. Everything was good. Now, the second week when I did it, that was the week of revelation. So, the second week that I did it, I felt good. I went to the gym. I said, yo, let me see if I can do some pull-ups. Before, I couldn't do no pull-ups. I didn't do no pull-ups. Your wrist was fucked up. My wrist was messed up. I did no pull-ups for eight to nine months. Sean, best believe I got on that bar. I did 10, 15 clean. I was like, oh shit. What, like, what's happening? I'm shocked right now. So I said, you know, let me kick it up a notch. I did five to seven muscle-ups, Sean. 
I did five to seven months. I couldn't do anything for nine to, um, nine to eight months. So that was the beginning phase for me to understand that food, let that food be thy medicine. Let that food be that medicine. You gotta eat to live, not live to eat. Yo, y'all check them out, man. Let that food be that medicine. Yes, sir. So, so Scott, check it out now. Um, I healed myself, basically, you know? So, yeah, that's what led me towards the plant-based lifestyle. Okay, so you're a YouTuber? Yes, I am. How long you been a YouTuber? Wow, I've been on YouTube since 2015, but I was on and off because um, sometimes I would get that high, and then I get an extreme low because I felt like I used to compare myself to other people. And that was that was that was my defeat already. Do not comp and then when I start to understand is like do not compare yourself to other people. Understand that you are a unique individual, and that's what how God made you. All right, what God is in place in you, out, what God is in place in you, nobody can take that from you. All right. So once I understood that, that's when I just started to just go in on the content, go in on the content, because I understand that Scott Bernhard something Scott Bernhard has something that I can display to the people that others cannot. And you should have the same mentality. Yo, yo, so Scott, being a YouTuber ain't easy. People, I think some people think that shit is easy. Man. No. <laughs> now, let me ask you this: What's the dopest? What's the dopest comment that you ever got from somebody, man, that hit you in your heart, man? Oh man, it's too many. It's too many. But um, there was this one comment that I got from this guy, um, and he literally told me, Scott. When I watch your content, me watching your content prevented me from doing, from me preventing, all right. So he said, him watching my content prevented him from committing suicide. That shit blew me away, Sean. And that's when you knew that's that I knew. your YouTube channel, it wasn't for you, it wasn't selfish no, no more. Nope. That people was, people was tuning in and, and getting energy from you, man. Yep. Do you know, this is what it is now. Like, now that you, you are a YouTuber, your um, personality, you have to understand that it's more than you now. You understand that you have a responsibility towards millions of people out there. Understand that if you stop and if you display a certain kind of energy, then guess what? The people that watch you, they're gonna attract that same energy to where they doubt themselves and to where, you know, they're full of negativity, all right? So when I understood that I do have a responsibility as a role model, that's how I knew I couldn't be selfish anymore. I had to keep on going and keep on inspiring these people, man, because they look up to me. Okay, uh, Scott, you, you you touched on depression a little bit, man. Some yeah. of our, some of your subscribers, some of my subscribers, they they in the, they in the throes in the in the midst of it right now, man. Yeah. Shed a little light on that, um, how you got there, and then how you recovered to come up out of that shit. Man, listen, man. Um, how I got there is just multiple different events in my life. I mean. Just First life of, experience. Life, life experience. I mean, let me get a little bit deep, man. Like, I, I, my mother my mother raised me. So I was raised in a single-parent home, just my mother, you know? And growing up, I used to see my friends with their mother and father. And then when I, you know, got to a, a more mature age, I remember one time I asked my mother, like, you know, where's my father, you know? And I cried. I cried that day. And that kind of left with a big scar of depression on me because I grew up without my father, you know, but then as I got older, I understood that my mother is my superhero. M my mother's a G. Any you could ask anybody, anybody asks me like, yo, Scott, who do you look up to? You think I'm going to talk about Rich Mogul? You think I'm going to talk about, you know, Marcus Garvey? You think I'm, I'm going to talk about Malcolm X? Yes, they inspire me, but who really inspires me is my mother. My mother's a G. She raised me, my sister, and my cousin by herself. Put her put us through good school, good schools, put us through great colleges. You know, she used to work the day shift and the night shift. So my mother's my mother's a G, man. So 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 Scott, so that fuck with you with, with, with not having your father around. Yeah, and then um, I remember my last year of college, I was supposed to go down to Jamaica to reunite with my father. My father sadly he passed away uh, four days. Um, after my birthday, I was supposed to go down there in the summertime and he passed away four days after my birthday. So that kind of depressed me a little bit too because we was really about to connect and really about to grow. My father was a very established business, uh, businessman in Jamaica. He was the first man to own an ice company within Jamaica. You know, so he's very established and I just wanted to create a, a bond and a friendship with him. 
you know, so we can just kick it and I can just show them like, you know, props, look what, look what I'm doing right now, you know? So, 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 now how did you come up out of that, man? How did you, how did you fight back from out of that depression? Um, give, give them something, man, to go with. Yeah, man, listen, you, you, to fight out of depression, you really have to, like I said, you have to go back to the positive affirmations, you know? Anything that's negative, you have to fight it back with a positive. So, what I started to do, I just started to like, you know, meditate more, I started to pray more, and along with the meditation and the prayer, I started to surround myself with positive um, influences, I started to um, surround myself with positive people, and I just started to just really be my biggest cheerleader, if that makes any sense, man. I just had to really hype up myself and just, you know, just fight through it, man. And also, another thing too I want to talk about is mental health within our community, within the black community. Listen, man, us as brothers, us as black men, we need to start being somewhat vulnerable. We need to start expressing our emotions. We need to start expressing to ourselves, to the right people though, not to everybody. But I feel like we're built up with so much tension. It's already hard being a black man, you know? So I feel like all that built up tension from our young age and from our adolescence, it will show up in our adulthood. So what we have to do now, we have to like start expressing ourselves and start putting um, uh, a major outlook on mental health. Cause it goes a long way, man. For man, real. You, you, you're absolutely right, Scott. You're absolutely right. Um, check it out, Scott, man. Um, give him your social media, man. Your YouTube channel. Give him all that shit, man. Yeah, man. Listen, man. It's your boy Scott Bernhard. YouTube is Scott Bernhard. Um, Instagram is body underscore by underscore Bernhard. Twitter Scott underscore Bernhard. Um, Facebook Scott Bernhard Bernard. All of that, man. I appreciate y'all, and I love y'all so much. Hey, man. yo, Scott, do me a favor, kid. Yeah, man. Tell the people, man. You know what you gotta tell them. I say, yo, man, fuck with Sean's YouTube channel, man. Listen, man. I'm gonna get real Bronx. Hey, yo, fuck with Sean's YouTube channel. You heard? <laughs> <laughs>